So this dresser is actually in really good condition. I don't think I'm going to have to do any repairs for it. It's just kind of boring. So I want to spruce it up. I want to pick a fun color for it and give it a new life. And I think this piece I'm going to work in my house. So right now I'm just in my kitchen. I've kind of cleared a bit of space and I'm going to use a brush for this one instead of my sprayer. So if you would like to see how I use a chalk brush to paint furniture and a roller to paint furniture, please follow along. And of course, I would love if you were to like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. And you can find me on Instagram for more at The Lavender Nest. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy the video. So I started off by looking at these pieces on the top and figuring out how I could remove them. So with pieces like this, sometimes they're nailed on. In this case, they had screws. So I just investigated and looked around the piece to try and figure out as best I could how these were attached. I ended up realizing that they were attached all the way through the back of the dresser and I would essentially have to take apart the entire dresser to remove these pieces. You can see I struggled with it for a while and eventually just realized they weren't going to come off. It wasn't going to be an easy process. So while I still had them somewhat detached, I decided to clean my piece so that I could get underneath and get any of the grime that had sort of built up on the edges of these. And to clean, you can use anything. I'm using a household cleaner that just has a degreaser in it. You can also use TSP, you can use Dawn soap mixed with water, anything that's just really going to get the dirt, debris, and oils off of your piece of furniture. The next step is just removing all of the hardware and then moving on to clean the drawers. I am the worst at losing hardware when I remove it, so I wasn't sure if I was going to reuse these, so I found a little applesauce cup and stored everything inside it so that I wouldn't lose anything. Now I'm going in with a 120 grit sandpaper to scuff sand the entire piece. This is a step that some paints say you don't have to do, but I would recommend always giving your piece a very light scuff sanding before adding any paint. Then I went back in just with a damp cloth and wiped away all of my sanding dust. Okay, it's time for some paint. So I decided to use Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Divine Lavender. And I'm using one of my Stal, Stal, Stalmeister? I don't know how to say it. One of those brushes, I'll put a link down below. And I'm going to use this one. It's sort of got a pointed tip, so it's going to work really well to do cut-ins along the edges. Now whenever you're painting around edges like this, especially if you're using a paintbrush, you just want to be very aware to look for drip marks on the corners that you're, you're painting on. So I'm just going around and making sure all of the edges here don't have any drips and it's very smooth. When I'm painting with a brush, I like to go around all of the edges first and sort of paint it like you would paint a wall. Do the edges for your cut-ins and then go back in and fill the rest in. You also want to try and keep it consistent and paint everything in the same direction. So I decided I was going to switch out the hardware, so I used this putty to fill the holes in. I really like using this putty because it starts out pink and then once it's dry, it changes to white and then you know it's ready to be sanded. Mm -hmm. 
So after I painted the first coat on the top, I could see there was a lot of dents and divots that the color kind of brought out. So I went in with that putty and I just covered up all of the larger gouges that I could find. And I'm going to wait for all of my putty to dry before I go back in and sand it down. So now I'm just taking a 220 grit sandpaper and I'm lightly smoothing over all of those spots that I filled. I don't want to be too rough because I don't want to make any new divots in the paint. I'm just trying to get everything flush so we have a nice smooth top. Then I just went in with a vacuum because this created a lot of dust and I am still working in my house. So I did my best to just vacuum up all of it on top and then I went back in with a rag and wiped up the rest. Now I'm going in and sanding the drawers down and I'm working with a little bit more pressure here so that it's really, really smooth and you won't even be able to tell that those holes were ever there. So now I decided I wanted to start using my roller for this project. So I always line my roller tray with aluminum foil. It just makes the cleanup so much easier. And I'm just using a small microfiber roller. You can find these at any hardware store. And then you just start rolling it on. The key that I find to getting a really smooth application when using a roller is putting on light coats. Sometimes people say that you get sort of an orange peel texture and that definitely is true with a roller. It's hard to avoid, but I find using multiple light coats works best. Now it's time to add the second coat onto the top and I'm using the same technique I did before where I'm using the brush to do my cut-ins. Then I used a roller to apply the second coat to all of the large flat surfaces. I let that dry for about a day and then I went in with the matte wax in clear from House and Canvas and I'm also using the House and Canvas wax brush. To apply it I'm just putting a small amount on my brush and brushing it across the entire surface of the dresser. I like to go between two different directions, sometimes I'll go in circles, I'm really just trying to make sure I cover everywhere. Now I'm going back in and I'm drilling new holes for the hardware. I just need a single hole for the pulls that I'm going to be using. So these are just leather straps that have a little button on them. These I got from Amazon. They're roughly $2 a piece and I love them. They looked so cute, so unique on this piece. And you can see the drawers were already lined for this piece so I didn't have to worry about that. So in total, I spent about $50 for everything for this dresser and sold it for $235, which worked out to be a profit of about $185. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love if you liked this video and subscribed if you want to see more. Bye-bye.